Hey everyone! In this video we're going to be talking about linear systems in normal form and this is for our differential equations. This is going to carry over with things we've seen before in our linear algebra studies and also our introduction um, into this chapter earlier on a few videos back. So a system of n linear differential equations is called um, or considered in normal form if it looks like this. We have x prime which is a function of t times or equals a times x plus f of t. And so a in this case is going to look like this matrix. And then f you can think of as a, a vector of functions. x is also a vector of functions of t. And then if you have a homogeneous system of equations, then this is gone over here. This is just plus zero. And if it's a non-homogeneous system, then this is going to equal something. And so recall, we talked about this previously, that you can rewrite an nth order linear differential equation. So in general, it would look like this. And you can rewrite it as a first order system of linear differential equations in normal form if you start using this substitution. So you can say, well, my function y, we can call that x sub 1, and then y prime, we can call that x sub 2, y double prime, we can call that x sub 3, and so on, all the way up to the um, n minus n minus 1 th derivative, and we'll call that our variable or unknown x sub n. And so you're basically taking a nth order differential equation and writing it as a system of first order differential equations. And so an initial value problem for the normal system just involves finding the vector functions that satisfy the system and the initial conditions. And here's a note about linear independence and dependence. So if we have m vector functions, x sub 1, x sub 2, and so on, if c1 times x1 plus c2 times x2 and so on equals 0, where c1 and all the way to cm are not all 0, and the determinant of a is 0, then these vector functions are linearly dependent. So we've talked about linear dependence and independence before, um, but just letting you know a reminder here, if you can write um, a linear combination of your vector functions that equals zero, where not every term is zero, and also the determinant of a is not zero, or is zero, excuse me, then linear dependence is the case. Otherwise, the vector functions are linearly independent, and the determinant of the matrix A is not zero. Okay, so let's try out our first example here. We're just going to rewrite our given equation as a first order system in normal form and then express the system in matrix form x prime equals ax plus f. So notice what we're given, a second order differential equation. We want to write it as a system of equations of first order differential equations. So this is where you uh, rewrite your variables and you pick some unknowns. So I'm going to say x1 is y and then x2 is y prime. And this will get us up to what we need. We only need to go to the n minus 1 derivative. So because this is a second order uh, differential equation, we only need to um, delegate unknowns or variables to up to the first derivative. Quick note, uh, just for example, let's say this was a tenth order differential equation, we would want to define variables up to the ninth derivative. Okay, so now we just replace. We have x2 prime is now y double prime. And then x2 is replacing y prime, then x1 is y, okay? So now what we want to do is we want to solve for our first derivative. So we have x2 prime, and we solved for that. I just took off the t's, but the x's are functions of t's. And then we know from our substitution over here that x2 equals y prime, but we could say that that equals um, x1 prime, so the first derivative of x1. And then that lets us write our system of uh, linear equations, differential equations, as first order equations. So we have x2 prime equals something, and then x1 prime equals something. Now let's write it in matrix form. So x prime equals ax plus f. And so we just have the vector containing x1 and x2 primes. And then our coefficient matrix, this is a. Here's our vector x. And then our terms over here, we do have these terms, this one term 
um, that doesn't contain any X's. And so this is like our non-homogeneous term. And so if you just want to verify real quick, let's just go with X2. So X2 prime equals 10 times X1 plus 3 times X2 plus sine of T, which is this equation right here. All right. So that's us rewriting our um, second order differential equation as a system of first order equations and then putting it in our matrix form. Now we're going to be doing some examples with showing um, in linear independence. And so let's show that the vector functions x1, x2, and x3 are linearly independent. So we have these three vectors given to us. And then notice what I did. I just factored out co a common factor in each one. So x1, I factored out e to the 2t. x2, same thing. And then x3, we just factor out e to the t. Okay, so we have our coefficient matrix that we can form uh, using the coefficients on these vector functions. So notice column 1, 1, 0, 1 comes from x1, the coefficients on e to the 2t, and so on for x2 and x3. And then we want to verify what the determinant is. So we have the determinant of this coefficient matrix. And do your um, cofactor expansion down any row or column, and we end up with some number other than zero, which is good. So then we could say that since the determinant of A is not zero, the vector functions are linearly independent. Okay, so just real quick, um, I went, I did my cofactor expansion down column one. All right, now let's review a little bit. We've talked about the Ron scheme before, but we're going to use it again here. And it just has a slightly different notation now. So the Ron scan of n vector functions each having n components looks like this. So remember from before, the Ronskian is the determinant of a matrix. And so in the past when we learned it, it was the matri the determinant of the matrix containing the functions and its derivatives. So it was like um, our function y, then y prime, y double prime, and so on. And so remember, we were replacing um, with our substitutions. Our x1 is y, our x2 is y prime, and so on. So that's why the notation has changed from what we've seen in the past. And so for our equation, x prime equals ax, the following three things are true. Um, our vector functions, x1, x2, and so on, are linearly independent if and only if the Ronskian is not zero. So if and only if this determinant made up of these vector functions is not zero. And then the set of vectors is considered a fundamental solution set. And then every solution to this equation here can be expressed in the form x equals a linear combination of x1 all the way to xn. All right, and so now a definition for us for a fundamental solution set, which is this set here. The fundamental matrix corresponding to that solution set is just the matrix X, capital X, that equals the matrix that's determinant is the Ron scan. So what I want you to notice, it's very subtle. The difference here is that these are vertical lines, letting you know this is a determinant, and the Ron scan is always a determinant. And over here it's brackets, because this is a matrix. Okay, so that's the only difference. The fundamental matrix, the determinant of it, is this Ron scan. And this is where the determinant of x, exactly what I was just saying, is the Ron scan. And this can be used to express the general solution, x, little x equals big X times C. So basically we're saying that for this uh, equation right here, x prime equals A times x, the general solution is x, and you can write it as this matrix x times C, which is just um, some con arbitrary constant vector. All right, so let's work out this example. We are going to verify that this solution set is a fundamental solution set to this system, x prime equals ax, where this is a. Okay, so real quick, notice what you're given. You are given a solution set, and we're just verifying that it is, in fact, a fundamental solution set to this system of linear uh, first-order differential equations, and a is given to us. Okay, so this set has three vectors in it. So what we want to do is we want to verify for each one, we're going to call this x1, x2, x3, that each one satisfies this equation. So 
starting with x1, we're just going to multiply matrix A times vector x1 and see what we get. Okay, we want to also show that the determinant of x, which is the Ron scheme, is not zero. So that is part of our work here as well. So A times x1, if we just multiply row 1 times column 1 and so on, we're going to get this vector. And we want this to equal the other side of the equal sign, so it should equal x prime. So if we differentiate vector x1, we should get this result if this is in fact the solution. And it is. So just differentiate each entry in x1, and it's exactly a times x1. So this first vector in our solution set does satisfy this equation. So let's do this two more times. So a times x2, multiplying matrix A times vector x2, and here's our result. And then verifying that if we differentiate x2, do we get the same thing? Take the derivative of each entry, and yes, these are equal. So x2 prime equals a times x2, which satisfies our equation. One more time, doing this with x3, so a times vector x3, that equals this vector here. And now we want to verify that if we differentiate x3, we get the same result. And if we differentiate each entry, yes, these are equal. So each of the vectors in our solution set satisfy the equation x prime equals a times x. But we do want to show one more thing. We want to show uh, that the Ronskian is not zero. Okay, so we're going to compute this determinant. And to pick any row or column, I went ahead and uh, just did cofactor expansion across row 1 and simplified, and we got something other than 0. This is negative 3, and so that's good. And so we showed that this determinant, uh, this Ronskian, was not 0. So for x prime equals ax, a fundamental matrix is the matrix capital X, which is a matrix whose columns are the vectors that make up our fundamental solution set. And then a general solution can be expressed in this way. Little x equals capital X times C, which is capital X, which is our uh, vectors that make up the columns of X, times these arbitrary constants, C1, C2, and C3. All right, and so in general, a fundamental matrix for a system X prime equals AX satisfies the corresponding matrix differential equation. And so everything is, is fairly the same from what we've been doing, just we're calling it different things and the format might look a little different. And so we're calling this, instead of just a regular differential equation, we're calling it a matrix differential equation because of the way we've formatted our equation. All right, now the last thing to talk about here um, is the non-homogeneous case and then steps for solving. So first, for the non-homogeneous case, if we have a system, notice what we have over here, this plus f of t. So x prime equals ax, or a of t times x of t plus f of t. Every solution can be written in the following format. Notice the only difference from our homogeneous case is this extra term, which is um, our extra function, x sub p. So this is where x sub p is a particular solution. And our solution set here, containing our vectors, x1 to xn, is still a fundamental solution set for the corresponding homogeneous system. So we still use the same fundamental solution set, and we just add this particular solution into the format of our general solution right here. And so this general solution can also be written as the following, x equals xp, the particular solution, plus our fundamental matrix x times c. And so where x is the fundamental matrix for the homogeneous system, and then c is an arbitrary constant vector. Exactly what we just did on the last example, as far as how we wrote our general solution, the difference with the non-homogeneous case is that we would just add in xp, x of p, right there. And so just the last thing to note here is some steps for solving our normal system. In this section, we are focused on formatting it and linear independence and dependence. Um, so here's just steps if you were to have to solve it. A lot of times, though, um, especially in this section, you're just verifying that a solution set is, in fact, a fundamental solution set. So if it's a homogeneous system, then you're going to find a fundamental solution set that consists of n linearly independent solutions. 
And then your solution here would be if you form the linear combination, x equals capital X times C, which is just this linear combination right here. For the non-homogeneous system, notice it's the plus F part. Then you find your particular solution, and then you add that in to your general solution. Okay, so that's it for this one. Thanks for watching.